G'day guys, I hope you're having a skits day. It's your boy Slendy here with something a bit different. Today I'll be presenting the definitive hardstyle producer tier list. And by definitive, I mean these are the producers that sprung to my mind when I thought of this idea about five minutes ago. So if I've left any out, or if you want to see me do tier lists for other genres in electronic dance music, or even sub-genres within hardstyle itself, say euphoric and raw, then leave a comment below. And as always, make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. Can we get this video to 1,000 likes? If you enjoyed this style of content, then I can certainly create more tiers for you. You may have also noticed I'm wearing some cheeky Jurassic Fwark merchandise. It's brand new and it's coming very, very soon. Hit me up in the Instagram DMs if you want access to the pre-sale link. And for everyone else, don't you worry, it's gonna be hitting the shelves real soon, shipping worldwide. Get your prehistoric pumps on. It's gonna be fucking sick, brass. But for now, I'll take you quickly through the tier list. As you can see here, we've got God tier, pretty self-explanatory, as are tiers one and two. The Rogue tier is for producers that I think are still semi-relevant. They pump out one or two tracks that are pretty good every now and then, and they can compete with the top tiers if they want. Nostalgic tier, these are the producers that hold a special place in my heart from bangers from yesteryear. They might not release as many things that I like nowadays, but they'll always get me going with those classic tracks. And then the final tier is very simply just not for me. So this is not a slide on the producer. If you like these producers, then by all means, they are incredibly talented and they bring a lot of great stuff to our scene. But for whatever reason, I just haven't got around them as much. All right, without further ado, let's rank some hardstyle producers. Wonder how many jimmies this is gonna rustle. And first up, we got the pretty boy himself, Mr. Adaro. You know what, I'm gonna put him in tier two. I actually do like Adaro, followed him for a long time. The Hardstyle Soldier, one of the earliest videos on the channel is to a banging Adaro track. Check that out if you're looking for a bit of a nostalgia trip. But his more recent stuff as well, I know it's not super recent, but I love when the stars connect in space with Mist. He's still got it, he's still relevant, still pumps out bangers. Oh, Adrenalize, look, this might be controversial, but I fuck heavy with Adrenalize. I'm putting him tier one. He's been producing since he was like 14. Pretty sure he released Forest Interlude back then when he was a teenager, still slaps. And then people forget that he just has unknown bangers, the likes of Find You, City of Gold, Secrets of Time, uh, honestly, like in and his new release as well, Synthwave meets Hardstyle with Midnight. He's still got it. I love him, froth the kid, hard. Oh, here we go, Mr. Heady, where we putting him? This is gonna annoy a few elitists out there, I'm sure, but I reckon he's still got it, chucking him in tier one. He's still got those tracks from back in the day, the likes of Doom, Scrap Attack, and then his hard bass anthem from 2012, an absolute sleeper. To be honest, it is my favorite Headhunters track. It is everything you want from a hard style track and even finishes with a hardcore drop. And I'm also a bit of a soft boy, so I really like his remix of Paper Thin. I really like Oxygen. Fucking run it straight if you don't. I don't even care. T1. Righto, Mr. Brennan Hart. Look, this, this one's a tough one because for so many years, he's been a mainstay in the hardstyle scene and he definitely has the nostalgia factor. So he just creeps into nostalgic for me, the likes of One Blade. It's cheesy, but I do like Imaginary. Um, he still has those tracks that from back when you first got into hardstyle are still gonna make you dance. His more recent stuff, not as much for me. Um, and his set's a bit kind of meh, but that's okay. He still gets me going, still love a sing-along to Imaginary. Once again, feels, right? Ah yes, the freak. Okay, Australian bias coming in strong. This man is God tier. I don't care what you say. His production is off the fucking rails. He can do any style, wh whatever he feels like on the day. I feel like he just wakes up some days and goes, hmm, yes, you know what? Today, I might just produce some drum and bass. Why not? And then he releases a track like Chase. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, all right. Ah, you know what? Let's release some filthy, like, um, whatever. And Hornet comes out and Gorilla comes out. And oh, I just love that album as well, so. He still has it. His, oh, Jesus Christ, his remix of Street Fighter by Anger Fist. What an absolute slammer. Any style, any format, the freak has it. He's a fucking legend. Right, oh, Code Black, another one that has good nostalgia factor, but to me is still releasing bangers. So I love his new track. Well, so sort of new. It, it only came out officially now this year with, with Atmospheres, uh, one in a million, but the likes of Accelerate, Brighter Day, oh, Pandora, look, 
that they're all bangers. You can't fault them, seriously. Crypsis, I haven't heard from him for so long. Where are you, bro? Come back into the scene. I'm putting him rogue tier because he is fucking rogue. Like, you even exist anymore, Crypsis? Can you please come back and release some stompers like you did circa 2011 to 2013? Please. Da Tweakers, another favorite of mine. Sorry, I love the cheese. These guys remix anything and turn it into a, a 10 times better version of the original track. Disney, movie themes, fucking the, the stoplight sound, I reckon they would have a good go at remixing that if they caught the sample down the street. And they're also just mad, they're mad dogs. I freaking love them. Their, their sets are so much fun and they always mix it up. I really enjoy the tweak, the tweakers. The tweakers? Jeez, come on, come on Slendy, mate. Digital Punk, mate, get back. Look, if Digital Punk, you go straight in nostalgic because the one track that has to be one of my favorite of all time, Blue Horizon with noise controllers. Bro, if you release something that is even a tenth as good as that, you can go straight back up to fucking tier one. Ah, Daddy Ruler. I do enjoy Daddy Ruler. He brings the fucking filth and has a good production style as well. Extra points that bumps him up to tier one for his variety and really trying new things, I think, with Raw. Raw can get a bit stale, and I think Ruler keeps it really fresh. So his more recent tracks are a testament to that. And I also know that he produces a bit of synthwave as well on the side. So he's got production skills outside the hardstyle skill set. So I think that that has value as well as a bit of a musicianship aspect to this tier list. B front, okay, first one that might piss a few people off. Sorry, sorry, big fella. Not for me, honestly. Like. It's, it's a tough one. I never got into B-Front growing up as much as some of the other producers. And technically, he's, he's fucking amazing. Honestly, like his screeches, I feel like redefined some of the screeches in that early, um, not early-ish, but that sort of mid 2010 to 2013 era of hardstyle where so much good stuff came out and that B-Front screech came in with the likes of Frontliner and a couple of their collabs. Um, and then he's, he's just got so much skill, but I can't really sing a track off my heart. So for me, that's like, maybe, maybe my fault, but not quite for me. DJ Kuhn, I'm putting Kuhn in the rogue tier. Uh, sorry about the uh, demonetization audit there, YouTube. It's, it's the DJ's name, okay? It's just leave him alone. He's a normal human being, I'm sure. Um, I, I really like some of Kuhn's tracks. Uh, Drowning gets me every fucking time actual tears on the dance floor. His remix of uh, Gareth Emery's You, really enjoy that. His more recent tracks as well. I, I love his Starfuckers edit. That is a floor filler. The first time I heard that at a major festival, I think it was Knockout when Project One returned in Australia. And Kuhn was kind of the set where everyone was like, ah, is he gonna be good? Who cares? Do I take my Smoko break then? Whatever. But he killed it, he crushed it. And that kind of restored my faith in him as well. So Rogue Tears still, Semi-meta relevant, if you will. Baz, mate. What happened to Baz? Nostalgic tier hard. Bro, can you please get back to that summer of Frontliner era where you released like 10 tracks in a row that were just ridiculously good. TBA, one more time. like, And of course, his massive anthem style tracks like Symbols, like Keep It Up. Oh, that old era frontliner gets me going as always, but I would love to see him return to that. I couldn't name a recent release of his that I've downloaded recently, which is kind of sad. DJ Isaac, I'm putting him in rogue tier as well, purely because I think some of his new stuff is is quite good. Like it's, it's classic non-offensive hard style, if you will. It's got a good melody, it often has a reverse bass kick, but is it on the same level as Till the Skies Falls Down or DJ Ease My Mind? No, not really. Like to me, that was peak Isaac when he was killing it. So I'd love to see him get back to that level, but he still is pumping out some good stuff lately and I'll dance to it. It's like I said, not offensive, but it's not gonna be groundbreaking. Okay, yep, missed, no hesitation, God tier. Name a bad miss track. You can't, you literally can't. The man can do no wrong. Everything he's released, I've downloaded. He's set at DEF CON 2018, basically made me poo my pants. It was that good. I, I think of it fondly when I need to go to the toilet because it made me poo my pants. It was that good, seriously. Future Noise, okay. 
Controversial one again, probably. I'm putting Future Noise tier two because his production skills, once again, are fantastic. He has a couple of tracks from that Black Mirror Society album that are just, ooh, ooh, yes, mwah, chef's kiss. But overall, he's a producer that I never got into as much. Maybe that's because I'm a real sucker for, and I've said this before, mad feels or mad filth. And I feel like Future Noise often can sit in the middle. He's got like really cool, innovative melodies and filthy um, raw kicks that just blend really nicely. And it works and I really like his stuff. But for some reason, it's not gonna get me going as much as the guys you see in the tier one or God tier. But still love a Future Noise set. Great producer. Randy, another one going straight into tier two. The likes of The Hunt. His, his new tracks as well are pretty good. He always can consistently pump out some bangers. But I feel like, once again, Adaro and Randy had their day in the sun a little bit. And as Guns For Hire, when they were producing together, they released some absolutely nasty shit, and I'd love to see them get back into that style of producing, release some more tracks like Bolivia, Kings of the Underground together um, on a Guns For Hire level. But, and as, as an individual producer as well, and DJ, love Randy's set, always good energy, always good vibes, and yeah, I get around his stuff, so he's solid tier two. Tatanka, okay, is, is, can you even tell that that's Tatanka from the, uh, from the picture? Hard to find recent shit of him because I haven't heard from him since discotech basically. But going strongly in the nostalgia tier because some of those tracks, like the Aussie Rave track from back in the day, that just plucks at every Aussie's heartstrings. You can't not hear that traffic light go off and then go, Ooh, yes, so it's time for fucking skits times, isn't it, eh? So nostalgic tier. Don't give up, another banger. And then of course, hit the likes of Tokyo, Africa, um, like please, travel around the world. He was doing the kind of trip around the world before Peacock cottoned onto it and took that in his French core direction. But I'd love to see it back. What else you got, Tatanka? Any more trips around the world for us? Okay, so Techno Boy. This is an easy one, rogue tier. A, because he has a bit of rogue chat sometimes on the likes of Twitter and Insta, it's very funny. So I wish that he had some more consistent releases. Um, Techno Boy as well just gets mad points for so many versatile tracks back in the day, like Builder, Her Voice, Super Bass Mix. People forget that that's an alias of Techno Boy. And that is a legit, like, muzz your rotator cuff out of its fucking socket song, it's that good. So can he get back to that level where I feel he was producing at his best in the early, early days as an alias, and then in that sort of peak TNT period where they pumped out banger after banger, like Screwdriver with Audio Freak, um, and then Skinner as well as another great track, uh, Promises, like he's got some really good ones in there, so can we get back to that level? We'll have to wait and see. So, The Prophet, this one as well, I'm really sorry, I know he's a bit of a legend of the scene, and I also really enjoy his hardcore sets, but his hardstyle sets, not for me. Just a little bit generic, just a little bit kind of meh. Um, I can only name sort of his one moment remix that I go, yeah, gets me going. I can't really name much else from him that will G me up. So sorry, but you know, once again, great producer, done a lot for the scene, but that's one that I might miss if it's uh, on during another set that I enjoy. All right, so Tone Shifters. Tone Shifters is a strong rogue tier as well. Still producing some good stuff, regular uploads of new tracks, and he's got some absolute floor fillers as well. Oi Fucking Oi came out with Code Black uh, recently, and that's basically a replacement for the Australian Anthem. So it's tough to see as well so many of his tracks that I loved when I was a kid growing up. Likes of Dirty Liar, Till Daybreak Meets, um, beat on the drums. That to me was such a high bar, stupidly high bar. He was legitimately one of the producers as a duo back in the day that got me into the scene more than anyone else. So because that bar is so high when I was young, I still have a bit of nostalgia when I listen to those old tracks compared to his new ones. And I, I kind of want to hear more of that old stuff again. Personal preference, but still a great producer, still fucking kills it. Wasted Penguins. Oh, this is tough. I'm dithering between Nostalgia Tier because they are, once again, the kings of feels back in the day. Absolute banger after banger when we were growing up. 
Stay Alive, Korea DM, Anxiety, like you couldn't name bad tracks from them back then. But it got, I feel like they got a little bit samey. So it was difficult to get into some of the newer stuff. And as they release new things as well, I do love the new track with Firelight. So I'm actually gonna put Wasted Penguins as tier two. Still relevant, still pumping out some tracks that are now starting to do a bit do a bit that is different as opposed to that mid period I feel like they had where things started to sound a bit like, a bit the same. Um, and there was nothing wrong with it. I still love those tracks, but you know me, I love my variety even more. So T2, um, that's gonna piss off a few people I know for sure, but I hear the Anxiety DEF CON 2011 edit and you can go get wrecked because that's incredible. Wild Styles, Wild Styles is great, honestly. Um, Unpopular opinion, but I reckon he's also at solid tier two. So, Great Spirit remix, ooh, Tribal Chant for the boys gets me going. And then the likes of Daydreamer, oh, back in the day. And then even what it's like with, I think that's with Atmospheres, such an underrated track. People forget that he's got some of those. Oh, This Is Home, Simo Frankel, I think. Um, I've probably butchered that name, but that's a track that sticks in my mind as one of his bangers as well. Uh, he's, he's very solid. I've always enjoyed him growing up and still now. And his closing set at my very first DEF CON will always hold a special spot in my heart, especially when he dropped I See Stars. Jesus, that's another one as well. Don't, don't be sleeping on that track. That's a killer. And then finally, Zartox. Zartox is also going in the nostalgic tier. Uh, pretty, pretty easy one this time, I reckon. I love some of his old tracks. Like even So High was the first Zartox track I ever heard and it still slaps today. But as, as time's gone on, I've, I've enjoyed his stuff a little bit less and less, but his sets to his credit are still quite solid. So I do enjoy him and he's gonna sit in the nostalgic tier with uh, a couple of my heartstrings as well. So there you have it guys, that is my official hard style list. Like I said, it's completely undisputable. All your arguments in the comments can go get wrecked, but also make them in the comments anyway, because I love reading them. What would you change? Who would you be putting above and below one another? Are you gonna crucify me for this list? Probably. But if you'd like me to make more of these tier lists, then let me know what genres, what producers, what styles I should include, and I will get onto that for you because this was actually kind of fun to do. So once again, thank you so much for your support. It has been really difficult to make content lately with my full-time job really ramping up a notch, but I love the fact that you guys are still here and I wanna pump out some new stuff for you. So if you enjoy this format, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe. Do you know that only like 20% of you who are watching these videos are subscribed right now? What is this bullshit? The rest of you casuals, hit that fucking subscribe button. Get on it. And once again, if you wanna stay tuned for the new merch drop, get keen, it's coming, and there's two new designs. So it's gonna be skits. Make sure you follow me on all my other socials as well. And let me know what you thought of this vid. Super keen to hear. So take care, stay skits, and remember, Muzzy's life, bruz. See you later.